Welcome back to Leeds Lately. Today's video is going to be a weekly transfer roundup video. So we're going to talk about some of the players that Leeds United have been linked with over the last uh, couple of weeks. And uh, of course, make sure you hit that big red button down below that popped up a minute ago. So let's hop straight into it. There's a Probably two or three players we'll talk about this week. Um, first one being Oliver Skip. Now, Oliver Skip, of course, you'll know as a uh, holding midfielder who's played for Spurs for pretty much all his career. Pretty sure he came through the academy there. Um, and he's been out on loan several times. One of those times was to Daniel Farkas Norwich. Now, at the time, Daniel Farkas' primary um, candidate target was actually Ethan Ampadu and he couldn't get the deal over the line at Norwich to get Ampadu through the door so we brought in Oliver Skip. Now to me that suggests that uh, Daniel Farker has identified that they're of a similar sort of style positionally um, the way they play um, it'll do the same sort of job for him so that can only be a good thing because you can only have uh, it's only sorry it can only be a good thing to have more than one Ethan Ampadu um, a team of Ethan Ampadus would get promoted from the championship I would imagine although I think you'd probably need one striker because he can't shoot for Toffee but so Oliver Skip then to, to come in I mean I've seen some rumors saying 12 million which is a lot for a championship club. It wouldn't be a massive amount if you got promoted to the Premier League, but given the fact that, yes, he's played for Spurs over the last couple of years, but he hasn't played a huge amount. He's not been a mainstay in their team, so he's probably looking to go somewhere where he can get a bit more consistent game time, and that would be uh, Leeds United in the championship and, and, of course, challenging for that title. So bringing him in would be a very, very good uh, choice, I think. A good range of passing, able to get forward and backwards, a little bit more... Um, ability to run forward, I would say, than what Ampadu has. Ampadu's great at being that sort of metronome in the midfield and controlling the play and stuff. I think what Oliver Skip will do is offer you a little bit of a, a holding midfielder that can get forward and, and be a bit of a box-to-box -box midfielder as well and help out, which is something, to be honest, that we have lacked because whilst we've had Kamara, who's done that role a little bit, um, He's not necessarily the type of player who goes forward and gets you goals and gets you assists. He, he's he's almost a lot more of a link-up player, Glenn Kamara. So this could be a different option for us, and especially at some points if we're going to have to play Ethan Ampadu at centre-back, you've still got your your Oliver Skip to play in midfield. So for me, I think that's a, a good signing to make, a good solid midfield signing. And I think also... I did a video the other week about Gruev potentially getting a move to Dortmund. That has gone a little bit quiet at the moment, but if any of our other midfielders are to leave, then somebody like Oliver Skip could surely set into that, um, step into that midfield role and do a very good job of it. So, yes, he would be a good player for Leeds. He would do a good job and he would help the squad out. Is it the priority, though? That position, is it the priority? Because... If Archie Gray is staying, you want to give him more time. You want to give him more time as a central midfielder. Um, and to do that, you kind of need to sign a right back, which leads us nicely onto the right back situation. Now, Ben Johnson from West Ham is another one that's been linked. We've been linked with him before multiple times. And um, he's quick, he's pacey, he's not necessarily the best one-on-one -on -one defender, but he will get forward and he will try and get the ball in the box and get assists for your team. But uh, the the Turkish side of which we do not speak have also uh, come in for him as well. So it could be a little bit of a race between us and them to get him. Um, I'm not sure whether we would win that race given that they're top flight football and I would imagine probably a bit of Champions League football as well. Um, but you never know, the player may want to stay in England. Uh, but what that does allow, like I said in the last little section, is that if he's going to play right back and you're going to get a right back in there and out and out right back, you can put Archie Gray into the midfield and perhaps you don't need an Oliver Skip and you can spend that 12 million elsewhere. Um, the elsewhere that you might want to spend that though, with another lovely segue, God, this one's smooth, isn't it? Um, is Alfie Gilchrist. Now, Gilchrist is a Chelsea centre-back who's come through their academy and has started to make a few first team appearances, one of which was against Leeds. Um, I remember saying in that game that I'd never heard of him um, because he's one of their academy players that's come through. And obviously they've got, whilst they've underperformed and they've been pretty poor of late, Chelsea over the last couple of seasons, 
they do have very good players in their squad. Let's not let's not beat about the bush. They do have very, very good players. So for somebody like Alfie Gilchrist to be able to break into the first team, even in the FA Cup and get some time. And to me, in that game we played against us, he looked calm and composed on the ball, exactly the sort of player that Daniel Farker will want. And when he needed to, he was able to break forward, bring the ball out of defence and seemed like he was a very, very confident young player. So to me, that one seems like it would be a good deal. If we could get a, a loan on him, um, then that would be a good one to bring in. Maybe have a little bit of a Ben White style season. Um this does maybe depend on whether we can get Joe Rodon back. Now, Joe Rodon, I mentioned this the other week, I think, but Joe Rodon has signed a new deal at Spurs to kind of protect his value. So if Leeds do want to buy him or have maybe a loan to buy if we get promoted to the Premier League, that may cost a little bit too much money. So maybe a straight loan for somebody like Gilchrist might be the better deal to do in this situation. But I know that Joe Rodon is keen on Leeds and his brother as well has been posting a lot of stuff even since uh, Joe Rodon's gone back to Spurs. Uh, Sam Rodon, his brother, has still been posting stuff in Leeds shirts and stuff like that and, and kind of almost hinting a little bit that Joe Rodon might want to stay. He seemed like he was very happy. It was one of his best seasons, probably the best season of his career actually um, for, for Joe Rodon. And I think I can imagine him wanting to stay because coming into this kind of... Um, this kind of melting pot of of, of Leeds United. Um, I can imagine the appeal of staying. He could be there with his teammates, with his Welsh teammates, and Purdue, Dan James. You could start to see why you might feel like it was a bit of a home for him, uh, especially if Leeds can get promoted back to the Premier League. Because I think if we'd have gone up, we would have just pulled the trigger on Joe Rodon straight away. Um but of course, we have got other centre-backs to come back from injury. Liam Cooper's been offered a, a new deal. And then, of course, you've got Pascal Strauchan. I would like to see more of Charlie Cresswell this season. And it's all well and good bringing in somebody like Gilchrist. But Charlie Cresswell, there comes a point where you go, OK, are you going to give him the game time? Are you going to let him bed in as a first-team player in the championship, which is the time to do it when you're in the championship? Or are you going to let him go? which I don't want to see happen because he's, he's come through the academy. It's nice to see academy players get into that first team and cement themselves in there. So I would like to see maybe a Strauch and Cresswell partnership this season. Um, but it remains to be seen what Farker makes a, a decision on there. But those are the three that are sort of the main ones that have been linked at the moment. Gilchrist at centre-back skip in that holding midfield role and uh, Ben Johnson at right back. Now, Furpo has kind of cemented himself as that left back role and Byram has signed a new deal. So I, d I think again for another year, Leeds aren't going to go and sign a left back. But for me, there's a priority and it's signing a number 10. I do think that Somerville and Nonto will leave and what that means is you either have to buy a number 10 or a left midfielder or a combination of the two. Um, but I've got my eye on a left midfielder who would be, I think, free. I think he's at the end of his contract. Um, so I'm going to make a video on him and that'll be out on the channel in the coming days. So look out for that one. Thanks for watching Lee's Lately, though, and I'll see you in the next one.